Hi guys, it's Dustin. I'm finally gonna show you guys how I edit my videos. I've been asked to do this for the longest time on how I film and edit and just make my videos the way I do in my style. And I'm really honored that you guys want a tutorial on this. I will say I do think I have a very distinct video and editing style. I think I'm confident and established enough that when you click on my video, you're like, oh yes, this is a Dustin Vong video. Like, you know what a Dustin Vong video looks like. I don't know if that's like self-righteous, but yeah. Lucky Day said it. I'm not gonna be showing you guys, and this is not a tutorial on how to learn and actually edit on Final Cut. This is more so gonna be a tutorial on how I edit my videos and get my videos to look the way they look in my style. This is in no way a tutorial. There's plenty on YouTube that you can go look at. And also I think it just takes a lot of experience and time actually playing around with it. I've been editing since elementary school, so I do have a lot of years of experience under my belt. Just for reference, I've been doing YouTube for a very long time. I've been making videos for my entire life practically since I was a child. That is a child. That's a child. And that's an ugly pimply bitch. I would get my family's camcorder film. I would do like little parodies of iCarly with my brother. Hello, this is the show called da, 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 da. I want to discover. Okay, let's start our show. So I've always made videos and then I got into like vloggers and stuff in fourth or fifth grade and then fourth or fifth grade I also made Minecraft videos and then I started making this channel in middle school So I've had a lot of filming experience a lot of editing experience I started editing on a crappy PC laptop that was probably only like a couple hundred bucks and it was the slowest thing ever I remember I used to edit by sound the computer was so slow where the actual video itself wouldn't load fast enough So I would edit and cut by the sound bars like isn't that actually insane I've used Sony Vegas I've used iMovie I've used anything there is possible that was free which perfectly segues to my advice that equipment does not matter it's the artist that matters and I know everyone in the creative field says this whether you're an artist or a musician or whatever if you truly know what you're doing you have the skills you have the talent you'll be able to produce what you want to produce with the equipment that you do have I will say having nice equipment such as a good laptop does make things a lot easier but when it comes to like cameras, microphones, things like that, that truly doesn't matter. You can literally use your iPhone. I subscribe and watch videos from people who make all their videos on their phone. They're still very entertaining. Their videos are still very beautiful. You can also edit on your iPhone too. So that disclaimer aside, I'm gonna tell you guys what equipment I use. I have the most basic equipment that every YouTuber has. I get my recommendations from other YouTubers. I am not the most tech savvy. I don't know every camera to exist. I don't know what certain cameras do. I just get, oh, that can do the job, I'ma get it. For cameras, I use the Canon F50 and the Canon G7X Mark II. These seem to be the most popular cameras. I know a lot of YouTubers have been transitioning into Sony vlog cameras, because if I'm being honest, the Canon G7X, although the video quality is really nice, the actual body of the camera is not the most durable. I swear everyone who owns a Canon G7X has had to deal with some sort of jankiness. Either their flip screen is like falling apart. For me personally, I've dropped my camera a few times, so the focusing is kind of shitty. The autofocus isn't as fast anymore. Yes, like I do use this equipment. Do I recommend it? I don't know. It's up to you. The Canon M50 is usually what I use for sit down videos just because I think the quality is a bit nicer and it does have a sort of like graininess to the camera, which I like. I don't know if it's the lens or the actual body camera itself. Also, you can switch out the lens for the Canon M50 and attach mics. Well, with the Canon G7X, you can't. The G7X is what I usually use when I'm vlogging or I'm out and about or when I have to film something but I want to be discreet because it's like a small little camera. Well, this camera that I'm filming right now, the Canon M50, is a bit bigger. Either way, both cameras are great. The quality is great. I filmed a lot of sit-down videos using my G7X for the longest time. For my microphone, I use the Rode Mic Pro. This mic works great, but I will say if you want to vlog, it's pretty big and noticeable. So I am looking into finding a smaller microphone to attach to this camera. I think the misconception that everyone thinks is that a video looks the way it does with the colors, the lighting and everything because of the camera. And while that can be true for some things like a Super 8 film camera, that is not true when it comes to just like these digital cameras. Like I see all these cinematographers on TikTok and I read their comments and everyone's like, what camera is this? What camera is this? But guys, it's not the camera, it's the color correction. The color correction is how you get certain looks for videos. For example, my videos, they look the way they look with the colors and the shadows and everything. It's because I color correct them. It's not because my camera automatically looks like that. I'm gonna show you guys. So here is my video normally with color correction and here it is without. 
this is how the video looks originally. So color correction makes a huge difference. It's how you're gonna get your own unique certain look or style. I'll talk more about that later on how I color correct. As for my editing software, I use Final Cut Pro, so that's what we're gonna be using today. And I know a lot of others use it. It does cost a bit of money for thumbnails and photo editing. I'm not gonna get into that today, but I will let you guys know I use Photoshop and Lightroom. I'll be sure to link all the equipment as well as anything I didn't mention, like little things such as hard drives or extension HDMI, whatever this shit is, memory cards, any small things that I didn't mention that weren't the main equipment, I will put also in the description. So find all that below. Moving on, let's talk about my inspirations. I think a major part of art is not copying. Do not copy people, but if you find things that you like from others, take maybe one thing from them, one thing from another person, one thing from another person, mash that shit together, and then you have your own little unique style. I think that's a lot of what art is these days, is taking little inspirations from others and then making it your own. And also copying people, especially YouTubers, if you're trying to become a YouTuber yourself, it'll make it very hard for you to differentiate yourself. What your viewers will see is just, oh, you're like that other person. You'll just constantly be compared to them. You'll kind of like be in their shadow. I get my inspiration from everything. My friends, because a lot of my friends are very creative and just like cool people. Recent life, like what's going on with pop culture or movies, heavy on the inspo from movies. I really love Wes Anderson and Wong Kar Wai. I think they both have such unique, distinct styles that align with my style so well. So I get a lot of inspiration from them when it comes to like my filming techniques or how I color correct. Obviously these are YouTube videos. This is not a film, which is actually a problem that I had to deal with for a bit. Ideally, I would love all my videos to look like full on movies with like crazy shots, set design. Obviously that is impractical because at the end of the day, these are just YouTube videos and when it comes to vlogs I still want to be realistic and real not have to like set up a shot all the time and also with vlogs it's a lot more fast-paced you have to capture in the moment as well so I think the actual filming process and putting thought into the shots you are recording is just as important as the editing process and if you take the little bit of time to really put thought into what footage you're getting or setting up a shot it will make the editing process a lot easier and add a lot more to your video some techniques I use is rule of thirds. Using rule of thirds can really make your shots more interesting. If you don't know what rule of thirds is, you can look it up. It's a pretty simple concept. If you take in any like photography or art class, you probably already know what it is. I also love symmetry, and I think this comes partly from my love for Wes Anderson. While filming, I really love a straight on shot, make sure everything is leveled correctly. And a lot of times I like me being directly in the middle. I try my best to make sure shots aren't like crooked or like at a weird diagonal, or I just make sure everything is like perfectly aligned at least most of the time. I've also have always been a very visual person. I know what I like and I know what is satisfying to me. So when I'm setting up a shot, I'm like kind of just using my intuition. You can always just play around and use your eyes. That's personally what I do. For this video, I liked how if I sat here and put my laptop here, it kind of just created this cool like you know, and also it helped fill up this gap of space. And also I liked how if I sat here, I filled this blank white space and I'm perfectly in between these frames. I will say I love a good montage with like my friends and running. If you want to serve cinematography, record when you're hanging out with your friends. Like if you're just like running around and like going on a drive, that can really elevate. At least for me, those are personally the shots that I love. Running shots, killer. Set up your camera down in like a pretty field, a beach, sunset, sunrise, whatever, and then just tell all your friends, guys, let's run. And then just start running away from the camera. Or chase your friends with the camera. But at the end of the day, don't stress. Do what naturally happens. If you don't get good footage, you can look at it as a challenge for when you're editing to try to make this footage look cool somehow. I think being genuine and honest in front of the camera is just as much important. Now breaking down my actual editing process. A tip I have is to import your footage into Final Cut Pro using Proxy. Proxy is basically just a smaller, lower quality file. So when you're editing, all your footage doesn't take up a bunch of storage, causing your computer to lag. So when you're editing, it's smooth. And then when you're done editing and need to render it, you just switch it back to the normal high quality and then export it and it's all good. So that's a tip I have if your computer lags when you're editing. So first I usually do my rough cuts. I'll go through and cut out any unusable footage, any silences, what I know I'm not gonna be using. And then I'll go in with a little bit more precision 
incision and do final cuts. During the final cutting process, I'll also do any zoom-ins or crops. Usually I do this at like funny parts or just things where I feel like it's needed. A lot of my favorite YouTubers are like comedic YouTubers, so it's really important to me to incorporate that side of me and my personality into my videos in that way. I know it's not the norm because I feel like being a part of the aesthetic side of YouTube, like everyone has to look perfect, everything has to be pretty. Like I'm just living such an aesthetic life, like lo-fi music literally plays every time I take a step. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just not who I completely am. Obviously, I love aesthetics. That's what I'm saying when you have to incorporate your unique self and your personality into your editing and your video style because that's what makes you different. That's what makes you entertaining and you'll find your specific audience that likes you for you. I will say I've definitely have felt pressure in the past to kind of conform into what everyone else is doing, especially me being part of this aesthetic niche. And I'm basically friends with everyone on this side of YouTube and they're all like lifestyle beauty girly you know and I don't think I'm that and also me being one of the only guys there is a little bit of overthinking I find myself a little bit less relatable than like my friends who are all girls on the side of YouTube I don't know it's just anyways I'm getting a little bit of a tangent another thing I do during the final cutting process is I'll add in my music and cut the clips to the beat of the music or to the rhythm whatever to the ticks whatever I'm feeling that day I've always just done this it's just more satisfying that way so whenever I can I try to make sure my clips line up with the music Speaking of music, let's talk about how I choose and find my music. I find my music from multiple sources, starting with the OG SoundCloud. For me personally, I usually lean towards lo-fi or jazz or classical or some sort of like indie sounding song. I kind of just use my gut and how I feel. I play a song, I listen to it, and I'm like, mm, will it fit this video? And I close my eyes and I am trying to envision the video with the music. I will say the finding music process is how you have to listen through so much music just to find a few good ones. And also it's so hard these days to find good music that's not copyrighted. Back in the day, circa 2017, you could go on SoundCloud, pick any lo-fi song you wanted and put it in your video and it would not get copyrighted. I guess back then like lo-fi wasn't as popular or something and lo-fi artists basically were not copywriting their music. But now literally every artist on SoundCloud is copyrighted. But sometimes you can still find some gems. I still go on SoundCloud here and there and try to find some songs. For the past year or two, I started using royalty-free, copyright-free music companies that you can buy a membership and they'll provide you with music you can go through and download and use. First I used Hello Thematic and now I use Epidemic Sound. You do have to pay for these memberships. They're not too expensive and I would say it's pretty worth it because you know you're not going to get copyrighted. But also I feel like when it comes to using these companies, a lot of the music can sound generic because literally everybody uses these companies. So you really have to like dig through the depths of epidemic sound to find unique songs that no one has used. Because I don't know about y'all, but I think I have a superiority complex where I want to be different from everyone else. And if I find a song that like I know so many other YouTubers have used, I just can't use it. But also I'm so sick of hearing those same songs over and over again. They start to sound really corny and tacky and I just cannot put in my video. Sometimes when I find a song that I really love but I know it's copyrighted, I'll go onto SoundCloud and try to find a cover of the song and usually the covers are copyright free. So that's another tip for finding music. Now that we're done with all of that, we can talk about color correcting. So I am not a professional when it comes to color correcting. I kind of just bullshit my way through it. I know a lot of people use the program DaVinci. I personally just color correct directly on Final Cut. I have been thinking about recently like moving to DaVinci and learning how to properly color correct like a professional. Until then, I'm gonna just do what I've been doing. So here's how to color correct for dummies. First, know a little bit of color theory. You don't have to be a master and know everything, but it's good to know a few of the basics. I'm gonna break it down very simply. Here is the color wheel. So when it comes to color theory and the color wheel, there's a term called complementary colors, which basically means colors from the opposite positions on the color wheel, such as red and green, yellow and violet, and blue and orange. This means they contrast each other. So if you were to mix these colors together, they would create a brown. And also, if you were to put these colors next to each other, they would help each other pop. For example, I have this red 
deodorant next to green, you can kind of see like it makes it pop. The red is so noticeable against the green. So that is just like a little crappy example, but I think you guys get the point. And why I'm telling you all this is because this is the main thing you're gonna need to know when you're color correcting. So when you're color correcting, you want the colors usually to be balanced unless you're going for a certain look. So let's say you add in red and now your video is like too red. You have to incorporate some sort of green to help balance it out. I'm not gonna show you guys the exact way I color correct with like the certain number for the levels and stuff and like the certain color and everything. Just because I feel like that's something you have to figure out for yourself to develop your own style with. And with every clip, it's different because with certain clips, there's different lighting. Some have these certain colors. So you do have to color correct sort of differently every time. For me personally, I'm not super picky. So I will color correct all the clips the exact same way. But sometimes when I do that and I'm going through, there's like maybe like a clip that's like, oh, I literally look like an Oompa Loompa. I'll tone down like the red tones or the orange tones. So you kind of just have to like play around a little bit. Usually how I color correct or like my go-to basic color correction. And then later on, maybe I'll go in and like change it up a bit. I'll put reds in the highlights, a little bit of greens in the shadows, and then a yellow warm tone in the mid-tones. Usually I'll put my mid-tones in the blue and then I'll just lower it to the negatives of the blue just to get a nice warm tone. And then obviously I usually turn up the saturation a little bit in the shadows and highlights. Usually not the mid-tones though. I don't know why. I just don't really like turning up the saturation and mid-tones. And I kind of like the look of a flat video. I don't really love contrast too much when it comes to lighting. How I do that is I turn up the shadows, turn up the mid-tones, and then lower the highlights. Usually the shadows will be a higher level than the mid-tones just because the shadows are obviously such a darker value. And doing this also helps uncover more detail in your clips. When lighting is really harsh, the shadows will cover up all the details. If you turn up the shadows, you can see what's in those shadows. So that is how I color correct for dummies. It's honestly very simple and just requires a lot of playing around and seeing what you like. I also recommend not staring at your screen for a very long time trying to get the perfect color correction because that will fuck you up. Definitely take breaks. You have to like look somewhere else and then go back to your screen because sometimes when you look at your screen for too long, it just like fucks up your vision and you can't see it properly. It's kind of like when you listen to a song over and over again, you get sick of it. You get tired of it. You don't appreciate the beauty of how it actually sounds. Sometimes I do like incorporating text into my videos, whether it's those yellow captions when I'm talking and showing dialogue or just random text. I don't use text as often anymore just because I've been trying to have a very simple layout when editing. But when I do use text, here's a list of fonts I usually like to use. It's always fun to explore new fonts as well. I get a lot of my recommendations from like TikTok. I am on font TikTok, so what can I say? I'm just a very interesting, cool guy. And of course, I love using a good old classic black screen as a transition. So when I'm doing a transition in a vlog from like one day to another day, I'll usually just plop in a black screen in between them and call it a day. There's plenty of other creative ways, but that's kind of just like what I like to do. I think it's very timeless. I never get sick of it. And I think it's very Dustin. So that's pretty much it for me when it comes to editing and how I get the coming of age aesthetic Dustin Vung look. Pretty much exposed all my secrets and my branding. I'm constantly changing. I feel like my style is constantly changing. So that's kind of how it is right now. But in a few months or in a few years, my style can completely change. So I have to go now because I have to go meet up with my friends to go paint some pottery. I hope this video was helpful and have fun editing. Bye. Are we singing the outro song right now? Yeah? Okay. Was it something I said? Oh, fuck.